Let's first look at the complications that are associated uh, with the small uh, blood vessels in the body. The first, uh, and the one that's uh, picked up uh, the, uh, the most commonly and earliest by the diabetic patients, are the eye problems. Uh, so we know that if your blood sugar level is high and it stays high for a long period of time, it can cause damage to the small blood vessels on the retina, uh, which is the part of the eye that's responsible uh, for your vision. Uh, so uh, one of the uh, early signs and symptoms uh, of uh, diabetic retinopathy uh, is uh, blurred uh, vision. And in the United States, uh, diabetes, of course, is the leading cause of blindness. And then people uh, with diabetes have uh, a two to three-fold increased incidence of glaucoma, which is an increase in the pressure within the, uh, in the eye. Uh, uh, and this can, uh, of course, uh, lead uh, to blindness uh, as well. Uh, the second uh, uh, organ uh, that ha is affected uh, by the high blood glucose that involves the small uh, little uh, blood vessels uh, is the kidney. Uh, so there are many, many uh, uh, little functioning uh, filtration units in the kidney uh, that are supplied by these small blood vessels. Uh, and these uh, small blood vessels uh, in these filtering units that are present in the kidney can be damaged uh, by a high uh, blood sugar uh, uh, if it persists for a long period of time. The problem is there really are no symptoms uh, of the kidney damage until it's a very, very advanced stage. However, your doctor can check for the presence of small amounts of albumin protein in the urine. There's a special test called the microalbumin test, which all doctors should be performing, and you as a patient should ask, has it been done, and do I have protein in the urine? Because if you have small amounts of protein in the urine, this is uh, the earliest sign of kidney uh, damage, and there are specific types of medications uh, that can help to slow down or prevent uh, the kidney uh, damage. The third uh, uh, type of tissue that gets damaged uh, that involves small blood vessels are the nerves. Uh, and uh, these signs and symptoms of the nerve uh, damage uh, can be uh, uh, something as simple as uh, sort of numbness or tingling uh, sensations in your fingertips and your, in your feet. More serious uh, can uh, be pain. Uh, that uh, diabetics find it uh, even uncomfortable to have a sheet lying uh, uh, on top of their legs when they go to sleep uh, at night. Uh, and it's uh, not uncommon uh, to lose the ability uh, to feel uh, things. Uh, so even when you sh step on a sharp object, if you're a diabetic uh, and you have diabetic neuropathy, uh, you may not feel the, sh the sharp object. You may also lose the ability to feel uh, water that's hot or cold. And this is particularly a problem if you're taking a bath, uh, that uh, if you put your uh, foot into the hot water, you may end up uh, with uh, a burn. Uh, there are also what we call autonomic complications. Uh, these are usually uh, present in people who have had their diabetes for a long, long uh, time. Uh, so these individuals can get irregular, uh, irregular uh, heart rates uh, uh, that can uh, lead uh, uh, to problems in terms of pumping enough blood out uh, to the tissues. Uh, uh, there can be problems with the body's ability to recognize a low blood sugar. So the diabetic may have none of the warning signs of a low blood, low blood sugar and just uh, simply uh, lapse uh, in uh, tacoma. Uh, some people get autonomic neuropathy involving the GI tract. Uh, the food doesn't empty out of the stomach, it just uh, stays there. Of course, this makes a huge problem with diabetes uh, control. Some people may get severe uh, diarrhea uh, related uh, to their diabetes. Uh, some people may lose the ability uh, to sweat when placed into a hot in, in environment, which can lead to an increase in their body temperature. So there are uh, uh, lots of uh, uh, different types of nerve damage that can occur. Uh, from uh, chronic elevation uh, in the, the uh, blood uh, sugar level.